Welcome back to another episode of Blue Gold Update. I am your host, Ivan. And I'm your host, Brock. In today's episode, we'll be showcasing some stories based around our lovely teachers at Friendship High and produced by your wonderful AV2 team. But not only are we telling you great stories, today we also have a special treat. But first, let's see the field and see what's happening our unified ununified track but produced by Canyon and Cam Candy a unified sports is where you join um, people with and without disabilities together to form one team. Um, this year we're doing track and field. We got to do it last year as well. There's other sports that are involved in it, but this year we just chose track. I think my favorite thing so far has just been, it, I know it sounds corny, but the unity <laughs> of Unified Track. Um, I have had more students come up to me just because of last year and ask to be involved in Unified Track, which has made it amazing. So our team went from like maybe 12 to over 36 uh, athletes and partners together. And so just to see them work as a team and to see them get excited about something, um, they ask me every day for having practice and I love that too. So it's just the unity of it and the togetherness and the family aspect of it. I saw how you this is our second year. Our first year was last year and um, we just kind of jumped right in right before our very first track meet and kind of learned as we, we went and now we know a little bit more and this is our first year to have a local track meet. So we're very excited about it. That's all I can do. So you, to qualify for area, you have to go to two local track meets. So we're going to have our local meet, and then we'll have Cooper meet, and then you have area, regional, and then state. And we totally feel like we can make it to state this year. Next up, let's take a closer look at our colorful theater teacher, Mrs. Pearson, produced by me, Elion, Miranda, Charlie, and Ivan. I'm a mom, a teacher, a friend, a student, a wife, a dog owner, two dogs. One's a rescue and one's a labradoodle. I thought our labradoodle needed a friend, and so one day we went to South Plains Rescue, I guess that's what it's called, something like that. Anywho, um, there are probably like 500 dogs there and the barking was so loud that it was like, it was echoing and it was so sad to me. And I, we probably like walked 10 dogs, different dogs, they'll let you take them out. And then there's this one amidst all these pit bulls just laying there and we picked it up and he was just, he became our dog instantly. It was love at first sight. I know this sounds weird, but my favorite thing to do favorite is is walk like I know it sounds so lame I love going on walks I love going on like bike rides and I love making waffles luckily have like right outside of our house is kind of a park area and it's a shared space within our neighborhood and so we play lots of games lots of going outside lots of running around um they climb trees I watch my favorite thing to do is like my son is really into basketball and so he'll be like you want to play 1v1 and i'm like i saw i'll play 1v1 but then i'm like you have to play my 1v1 which is snuggle time i'm like yeah <laughs> which he thinks is dumb but i love i just love i like talking to them i like diving into their brains seeing what they think about at that age i have two boys um their ages are 10 and 7. our life with children didn't start out very easy though so um, Hayes was only one pound nine ounces when he was born, and he was born at 25 weeks. They say at 24, your baby's viable, meaning they'll intervene with medical procedures. And we were at 25, so 
as you can imagine, he was the size of like a beanie baby and went through all kinds of stuff. So that was a really hard time. And he, I stayed home for eight years during that time period. I didn't work at all. Hayes came home on oxygen. And so he had at least five doctor's appointments every week. And I would take him with the oxygen tank to wherever we needed to go. I get to see people like from day one to day whatever when we end develop confidence and there's nothing more more rewarding than that for me just to watch somebody come out of their shell and be okay with exactly who they are god nothing more rewarding okay i didn't want to teach at all my dad made me get my licensure when i went to college he just said for something to fall back on because everything that i wanted to major in was the creative jobs and as we know creative jobs usually don't make money unless you're really good or you know somebody or you're just like off the charts talented. And I was not off the charts talented. So I got my teaching lessons and I was like, I'm never going to teach. Well, of course I graduated in December and the first opportunity that came my way was a teaching job. And I took it because I was like, I want to be on my own and make money. And, and I've tried lots of different things since then. And every time, I guess I realized that I like it more than I don't. And I realized if you spend so much time doing something, you need to like it more than you don't. And the other things I did, I didn't like them as much as I did like teaching. Speaking of colors, our first treat we have for you today is Green and Mystery. Here our first short film produced by Elion, Brock, Canyon, Xander, me, and Daniel. As you probably know, band is one of our top programs here at Friendship, so let's take a look at its orchestrator, Dr. Smith, produced by Izzy, Mia, and Ashley. I'm the director of bands here at Friendship High School and also the fine arts coordinator for Friendship ISD. Uh, I'm very passionate about music. That's why I've chosen it as a field and very passionate for students. And so that being a band director is a great combination for me. Uh, but passion, I love music and I love students. And so those combinations work really well for me. 
music was, it, it wasn't all, I mean, I grew up with music. I mean, I went to church, and so there was music always in church for me, singing growing up uh, in the church. Um, but, you know, n my parents weren't musicians. Um, my grandparents, you know, maybe besides here a guitar player here or there, but they weren't instrumentalist. Uh, and so the first time I ever had the chance to play an instrument on my own was um, was beginning band in sixth grade. And so I really wanted to be a flute player. And so I tried to play flute and really couldn't make a sound hardly at all. Um, and then went and tried to trombone and then just really did really well on trumpet. And so. My first taste of, you know, combined music with education was my sixth grade beginning band class. And so I was a trumpet player through that, fell in love with it, uh, found good success, loved to practice. I loved the challenge of uh, trying to make myself better. And so I excelled pretty well with it uh, and then ended up uh, deciding my, I guess it was about my senior year, deciding that I wanted to do this for a living. I can't really say, you know, I, I personally had a lot to go through struggle-wise. Um, we all have our little things here and there, um, but there was nothing major. I, you know, I have loving parents and they've taken really care of me and nurtured the love of music for me. Uh, they were very supportive. Uh, my family is very supportive. I have a wonderful wife who's very supportive of, you know, I've moved a lot. And so um, I'm very lucky and I find myself blessed that there probably hasn't been very many struggles, major struggles. Uh, so I really don't know how to answer that with just the fact that, you know, whatever minor struggles that I've come across, uh, I've always just tried to, I think it goes back to that adaptable part of it. It's just, just try to deal with it, move on, and just remember that there's a bigger picture uh, with, with everything that you go through. Uh, and not to let anything kind of just stop that, that one love that drives you. Uh, and for me, that's it's education, it's students, it's music. And so whatever I run into, I just kind of just deal with it and just, just move on. Let's see if we can capture the bigger picture and take our photography teacher, Mrs. Thomas, produced by Elijah and Caspian. I was in college, I was a visual studies major, which is art education, and uh, I took a history of photography class that I absolutely hated every minute of that class. And then the next semester, the only thing that was open was uh, a photography class in the darkroom. So I took that class and absolutely fell in love with the entire process of developing pictures, taking pictures, being in the darkroom, just everything that had to do with photography. I loved the entire process. I had a friend who was getting married and she asked me to take her wedding pictures and at first I told her no and then uh, she was going to give the front row of the wedding disposable cameras and I kind of panicked and said I can do better than that and again did something, stepped out of my comfort zone, did something that I wasn't sure I could do and fell in love with the entire process. I got into teaching because I was an art major like I said before and um, there's not really a lot of money to be made in Lubbock, Texas, just being an artist. So I looked into education and decided that that would give me time to stay home with my kids and I could teach. But then so once I got in the classroom, I really fell in love with just the whole atmosphere of teaching. I adore kids, I adore being around kids. You guys keep me young, keep me creative, and then I get to pass along my knowledge. So I really love being in the classroom. When this position came open at the high school, I had a numerous people that reached out to me and said, Thomas, this is your job. You need to apply for this job. So I looked into it. I really liked the curriculum that I saw. 
I liked what the teacher previous to me had posted and done with their classes, and I thought I would be a good fit. Interviewed and got the job. Our second short film is sure to take you out of this world. Produced by Madeline, Miranda, Rachel, and Izzy. Do this. Hi, welcome. Welcome back. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Hi, welcome. Hey, girl, I see you over there. All right. Thank you, thank you so much. You all, y'all are too nice. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you all for joining us today, and welcome back to You Didn't Hear This From Me. I am your lovely host, Michelle Lynn, and on today's very special episode, we have a out-of-this-world guest. So, as we all know it, the world is getting more and more advanced every day. Even if we're slowly killing this planet, that can wait. Today's special guest comes from a depressing little planet in the corner of our universe, seeking a blissful refuge in what we like to call our planet Earth. So, let's go ahead and welcome our guest onto the stage. You can go ahead and come on out. Thank you for coming on to our show today. Um, let's show a little bit of love for our out of this world guest. Now, now, hold on. Let's show our guests some respect, okay? Let's be courteous. They've come a long way. So can we get some applause this time, please? Thank you, thank you. That's so much better, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, ever since I've been on this planet, it's been, everyone's been so happy. It's almost depressing. Well, I just wanted to give you a very warm welcome onto our planet Earth. So, what brings you to Earth? Well, on my planet, on my planet, it's um, called Nyad. Um, it's far away from here. Um, everything's just blue, you know? Like, everything. Like, the houses, the stores, the roads are just blue, and nothing has color or definition to it. It's just all blue and I needed some more color in my life, so that's why I came to Earth. Well, I've never really seen anything like that, actually. Audience, have you guys ever seen something as blue as, as our friend's little planet? Anything? No! Is this interview almost over? I have reservations. I really don't want to be here because everyone, it's, you're just way too happy and cheerful for me. Too happy and cheerful? That's what you came to our planet for. Well, have you seen my audience lately? You know what? I worked with Oprah, okay? And do you see where she got? Look where I am, having to film my interview in a high school theater. You know what? No, I'm done. I'm done with this interview. I'm done with this interview. Cut the cameras. Turn them off. Turn them, no, stop. Turn the camera, stop. Turn it off. We'll take our next step in our wonderful dance teacher, Mrs. Smith, produced by Lexis, Rachel, Caspian, and Maria.
We start at the very beginning of the year learning skills and short combinations that get those classes ready to do a longer combination, which is their dance that's about two minutes long. So we start in August just kind of learning skills and getting ready. And then we actually start teaching our choreography in January and the kids work on it January through April and then we perform in April. So that's how long the kids work. Now we work a lot um, before and after school to do choreography and to, um, you know, we've got formations and costuming and ordering and all that sort of thing. I wanted to become a dance teacher. Well, number one, I started dancing when I was three. So dance is something that's been a love of mine my whole life. Um, the first time I started teaching a dance class, I was actually in junior high and I started with the babies. So I had like a three to five year old class um, that I taught dance. And then as I got older, my students got older. Um, so it was kind of my high school job and my college job all the way through. I would teach at studios and teach um, dance classes and cheerleading classes and tumbling classes. And then when I started school at Texas Tech, actually my first degree is in speech and hearing sciences and it had nothing to do with dance. Um, but then after I graduated and got into graduate school, I realized that I really wanted to be a teacher. Um, so I got my teaching certificate because I just feel like there are lots and lots of kids out there that need strong, positive role models and people that just care about them and care if they're at school and care about what's going on, you know, in their life. And um, it feels like a ministry for me. And um, I just really like the high school age. Um, so I started teaching as a science teacher, but then realized that I could be a certified dance teacher. It was like a light bulb went off when I discovered that. And, um, you know, so it, it mixed my love of high school students with my love of dance and made it possible for me to mesh the two. And really, it's a perfect job for me because I get to work with kids and I get to teach them dance. And it's just, it's amazing. But in the dance classroom, we do so much more than just dance. I mean, we, we, we talk about life and we talk about, you know, kindness and how to treat people and what do you want to be when you grow up. And it just gives me so much more time to be able to relate to my students in the dance classroom. For our final short film, Love Knows No Bounds and Neither Does the Main Character of This Story. Produced by Caspian, Elijah, Alexis, Camden, Maria, and Mia. Alexis, I've watched you every day. Um, I love you. Who are you? Move. I love you. Uh -huh. I picked these for you on the way to school this morning because I love you so much. They're fake. What? They're fake. And I don't even know who you are. So, so, you, you love me too, right? No, I don't even know who you are. You, you don't? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I can't believe she did that to me. How dare she? She rejected me in front of the entire school, no less. I can't believe it. I'm so, I'm so, I've got to have revenge now. Now I tell you. I know what I'll do. I'll bake a cake and pretend it's to apologize. But instead, oh, instead, I'll kill her. That's right, her and her dumb little boyfriend. Oh, I will have my revenge. And it will be glorious, glorious. She will rue the day she ever rejected me. Heart is black 
and you get just the right amount of each, it'll kill whoever eats them. I made you this cake to show I have no ill will for being rejected. It got a little torn up on the way here, just like how you tore up my heart. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope we can be friends again. Bye. They'll never know. They'll be too busy dying to know. Yes! Yes! Finally! He's dead! The one who stole her from me! Oh yes! I have had my revenge! But, in proving my love, I've killed the only woman who has ever meant anything to me! Oh, Alexis! Oh, I cannot believe I've done this to you! Sleep peacefully, my love! Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching today's episode of Blue Gold Update. If you have any story ideas, be sure to email us and subscribe to Friendship.tv on Facebook and YouTube. We'll see you next time.